They tell you this and this, and then they want you to meet this condition. Okay? So let's just start with what I think you've already established, which is if it's monic, that means it's in the form x squared plus bx plus c. So that's monic, a is equal to 1. If you've got the axis of symmetry being x equals negative 2, the axis of symmetry, of course, is minus b on 2a. Right? So minus b on 2a, that's equal to negative 2. But you already know what a is. It's monic, right? So if a is 1, then that gives you b is equal to, you multiply the 2 across and the negative as well, you get 4. Yeah, is that okay? So, so far I have x squared plus b, sorry, x squared plus 4x plus c. Yeah? x squared plus 4x plus c. Okay, so this is what I've got. Now, if you think back to when we were graphing, and I said, okay, let's just lock A and B in place, and then just vary C, what you're getting is the same problem, and it just moves up and down and up and down. Okay? So this is the kind of picture I'm imagining. Um, X equals negative 2, so let's, let's get an axis on here. That's my axis of symmetry. So I'm going to be around here. Right? So I have a concave up parabola, and it's moving sort of up and down here. Right? Now it's tangent to y equals minus x squared, so I've got this guy down here. Okay? So you can see what I want is the particular parabola such that I shift it up, like you know, this wrong colour. This one will be too high, too high, too high. Know, too low, too low, there's that one right in there, right? That will give me a particular value of C such that they are um, tangent to each other. Okay, and I don't know where they're going to be tangent exactly, but it's going to be somewhere around there. Okay, now I've got a couple of approaches, right? Previous questions that you've had here have led you towards working out the derivative of this thing, because you can work it out, it's just 2x plus 4, right? And it's saying, well, if I want them to be tangent, then I simply want this derivative and the derivative of this to match at a particular point, right? And I want them to intersect at that point, okay? Because it's not just enough for them to match. You know, I can have two parallel lines um, that have the same gradient, so the, the tangents, the, the, the gradients match, sorry, but they're not tangent to each other because they're apart, right? So I need the derivatives to be the same, but I also need them to intersect. Now I could go ahead and solve that way, but that is hard. Part of the reason why is because, as I just said, I don't know where they intersect, and it's not immediately obvious, right? That's not a, a direct path or an efficient path to get there, okay? Whereas in a previous question, for instance, they said, the tangent at x equals one passes through a particular point. So they give you a lot of information to tell you where this tangent's gonna go, but here I have no idea where they intersect, okay? So I'm looking for some other way of doing this, some other method that doesn't rely on the derivative. Okay? Now, noticing that they intersect neatly together. Okay? If I were to find that point of intersection, the way I would do it is just by solving simultaneously. Right? Here's one equation, and here's the other one. Okay? So this is that point. Sorry. This will give me the x-coordinate for where they intersect. Do you agree with that? Okay. Now, just think about this for a second. This here, right, when I'm solving these two quadratics together, all I need to do is just rearrange it a tiny bit. And you can see that this is itself another quadratic, right? The point of intersection is another quadratic. Now, that makes sense because you remember how I drew a whole bunch of these green options, right? So, for instance, this green option up here, right, the very highest one, it never intersects with y equals minus x squared. So if they never intersect, what does that mean about this particular quadratic here? Less than zero. Yeah, it has no solutions, and the way that I know it has no solutions is the discriminant will be negative, okay? So if I had this x squared plus 4x plus c, you know, c equals 5 or something like that, it's obviously too high, okay? then when I do the discriminant of this thing, it will be negative, okay? Alternatively, for instance, pick this one, it's down too low, right? When I draw it, I get two points of intersection, right? For two points of intersection, that means the discriminant will be positive, right? For this quadratic, that gives me the points of intersection. What I want, of course, is I want exactly one solution, right? Which is when the discriminant is not positive nor negative, but zero. 
Does that make sense? So for this particular quadratic, which gives me the points of intersection, I only want there to be one point of intersection, right? And that's the discriminant being the zero. So let's just quickly give this a crack. B squared minus four A C. The C is C, that's convenient, okay? So 16 minus eight C equals zero, right? So C is just equal to two. Okay. Now, let's just think about this for a second. So, therefore, what I'm expecting is x squared plus 4x plus 2. That's what I'm guessing. Now, you can go ahead if you want, and um, you, can, you can cheat a little bit, and you can say, sorry, I want this. You can cheat a little bit and say, all right, well, this tells me that I got it right. Okay, but how else might we be able to know that we got it right? Like, we don't get to take this in with, the, um, with you to the exam. So, how do I... If I'm going back and checking, like, cause I wouldn't normally do this. I'd say, like, I've got an answer. It seems to work. I'm just going to move on. But if I'm coming back to check, how could I actually know that this is the right answer? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Could you, could you now do the derivative thing? Okay. Yes. Yes, I absolutely could. Right. Um, I could say, all right, well, I'm, um, I'm expecting that these two things will have the same derivative at a particular point, right? What is that point? It's going to be, well, uh, this is where, this is where they two, they intersect, right? So if I put in my c equals two in there, I'm finding this, two x squared plus four x plus two equals zero. All the coefficients are even, so I'll just divide through. Like so, that's a perfect square. Okay, like so. And so, firstly, I've established there is only a single point of intersection between these two. And, um, yeah, my graph's not the greatest. So, it should be at x equals negative 1. Okay? That should be where that is. Now, I can go a step further and say, all right, I already know the derivative of this. Right? The derivative of this guy, x squared plus 4x plus 2, is going to be, what is it? 2x plus 4? Yeah. Yeah. So, at x equals negative 1, this will be 2 times negative 1. That's negative 2 plus 4. So that's, that's positive 2. Okay, so that's that one. When I think about the derivative of the other graph, which is negative minus x squared, right, that's minus 2x. So at x equals negative 1, which is the point of intersection, I put that in and sure enough I get 2. It's the same gradient. Okay. I didn't have to do that. Like that was just, I wasn't sure. Like is that really the answer? It's got one point of intersection. At that point of intersection, they show exactly the same gradient. What else do you need? Okay. So just think, right? Like I said, I found this easier because it's a bit it's a bit shorter, really, than uh, here's my solution for the previous one. You just have to do a bit more legwork. But it's a bit more obvious what you have to do in that question. They hand you so much information, you're like, I guess I have to use all these bits of information, right? Whereas here, the hardest part was getting to here, I think. Like we, I think that was the hardest part. We did it. We got exactly that, but like it didn't show. I was like, wait, like how did we go from finding the point of intersection to finding the discriminant? Is that yep, right? sure. That? So I guess this is why. Do you remember when I said, oh, okay, you have some um, some general quadratic, right? And when we say, oh, okay, the discriminant, the discriminant being positive, the discriminant being zero, the discriminant being negative. Okay, when we talk about what values of x solve this, right? We tend to think, oh, we call them roots. We call them roots. We call them these things. One, two, right? But they are more than just roots. They're just whatever solves this equation, right? Now, how did I come about with this equation? And the answer is, the solutions to this are where the two graphs collide, right? So what I'm really finding is not roots being two of them, or one of them, or none of them, I'm searching for points of intersection that are two points, or one point, or no points, okay? So that's why it's such a big deal to talk about the discriminant, because it gives you, it gives you more than just roots. It can be used to find all kinds of things. In fact, earlier when we were doing um, graph and rational functions, you could even get like the range of a function with the discriminant, because you just want to know where it's real, right? So I think once you see Point of, points of intersection, right? And I only want one of them, or if you like, I want a double point of intersection, just like we say we want a double root. That's really the insight you need. And then the rest just kind of falls out. 
that's, that's where the question ends, really. You don't need to do any of this. This is just a check. Okay. Does that make sense? So can you do like the two de derivatives that are equal, like x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals mm -hmm. minus x squared? You mean like this? Um, yeah, like the left-hand side part. Um, hold on, hold on. x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals minus x squared x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals minus x squared. What about it? Um, um, it's the derivative of the 2. So wait, so these are, the, um, these are just the equations of the parabolas. These yeah. are the derivatives. So what did you want me to do with the derivatives? Um, so first we know the derivative of one of them is x squared plus 4x plus 2. Wait, then wait, 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 wait. Pause, pause, pause. That's not the derivative. That's the function itself, right? Oh. This is the derivative. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. 2x plus 4 equals minus 2x. Yep, so you can do, that's exactly the same thing as what we did here. So you can say, oh, okay, um, even when you don't know what this is, because the derivative of a function is irrespective of how up or down it is, yeah. all of these green functions I've drawn, they all have the same derivative. So even if that was still c, it disappears. So good. So you can say, okay, I want to know where these two are equal to each other, where the gradients are equal to. And you, you come up with the exact same thing as this, because you add the um, 2x over here, so you get that, you take that over. So you say, oh, that must be the point where the gradients are equal, right? Yeah. And then you just move it up and down. You move uh, this guy up and down such that it passes through x equals negative 1, uh, y equals negative 1. That's where it will go through. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's another way of doing it. You'll get exactly the same result.